Um, in some ways, I'm going to begin with the position of the mundane and basically end with the position of the mundane. Um, I think um, what uh, uh, I'm going to talk about a bit is to uh, look into this whole question of uh, history and history making and narrative making in relation to uh, the roles and uh, methods or perhaps modalities in which institutions may, uh, may, may deal with or may grapple with. So uh, in that sense, um, my presentation will uh, pretty much talk about uh, the work that uh, we are doing over the past two years, focusing on uh, the NUS Museum and focusing on uh, the way in which we uh, struggle with the uh, context of the museum and the purpose of the museum. So uh, very much uh, if there is any relationship to uh, the issues and topic at hand, uh, it will be uh, very much ways that are rather meandering, meandering rather than direct. So. Um, I begin with this. This is uh, part, or this is uh, part of an exhibition which uh, is ongoing right now. Um, the quotation that you see here is by a person called Wa Ali Jangut. Um, he is a caretaker of a Muslim shrine, Muslim shrine, uh, in Singapore, and the shrine was uh, demolished by the authorities sometime in. Uh, 2009, and well, what is interesting about Wa Ali Jangut, this person you see in the photograph here, is that he is uh, wholly illiterate. Uh, he can, he cannot read or write, whether it is in a Romanized script or whether it is in the uh, Arabic uh, script of the Quran. So, basically, his uh, knowledge uh, is one that is uh, oral in nature. So what is interesting here is that he is lamenting on uh, the notion of uh, tradition and heritage and ways in which uh, memories uh, within the context of uh, incessantly modernizing Singapore uh, is uh, often uh, excluded as part of the uh, mainstream thinking. But uh, let me just... Uh, 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 start with this, uh, uh, meander with this a little bit. This, uh, in May 2001, the Singapore media started reporting about Bukit Brown, burial grounds, which, uh, which will eventually make way for a housing and an eight-lane highway. I think this is somewhat familiar story in uh, uh, places like Hong Kong too. So about 5% of the area's 100,000 Chinese graves are likely to be affected. So the Bukit Brown grounds opened in 1922 to 1973. It is argued to be significant given the historical personalities in third over there. And uh, eventual natural sanctuary it provides for the Singaporean wildlife, whatever that's left of it. So this is uh, according to uh, the many civil society groups that uh, uh, begin concerting the effort towards it. So Singapore Heritage Society, uh, uh, one of those uh, leading uh, civil society groups, led a loose affiliation of civil society uh, groups to stop or mitigate the impact through direct engagements with the government agencies. So the veracity, of course, uh, of the civil society groups in coalescing public opinion had been uh, fervent and very organized, characterized by use of social media, not only as a tool to organize a campaign, but also to facilitate aggregation of facts, personal accounts, and histories. So, uh, of course, uh, these this, uh, sort of uh, issues and discussions are not uh, exactly life and death, but uh, within the context of uh, Singaporean situation, uh, this was uh, something that is uh, clearly important to them. In, in terms of uh, a, a kind of a projection. So by the end of March 2012, discussions seem to have broken down the groups, claiming that the same old strategy of the government of fait accompli uh, is in operation. They call for a mor moratorium on housing and transport infrastructure 
including the new roads, uh, while the national discussions are still underway over housing, transportation and immigration. So what perhaps the Bukit Brown discussion is all about is the thinly veiled projection of the ongoing question of citizenship in Singapore, its membership and what right it offers, and in the face of drastic economic and social changes. So in a sense, uh, what you have here is a profoundly changing uh, economic and social landscapes. And uh, uh, I, I guess uh, one would understand that uh, just uh, last year, uh, the election had uh, uh, shown that the, there is an erosion of uh, the popularity of the government. Um, and it basically is indicative of the uh, range of concerns and unhappiness, perhaps on the part of Singaporeans in relation to the large uh, uh, migration that uh, uh, is occurring. So any issues in relation to what the government is doing uh, in terms of urban planning becomes a kind of lightning rod, uh, the lightning rod that brings together a whole range of uh, civil society groups. Um, I think I'm uh, giving this uh, example not so much in terms of uh, addressing this whole question about uh, Bukit Brown or uh, the issues that uh, Singaporeans are uh, engaging with the government, but uh, much more to do with uh, questioning ways in which um, institutions uh, can perhaps uh, accommodate the uh, various dis discussions and interests. Uh, and and here, here you see the kind of um, the, the kind of, of uh, uh, cynicism perhaps uh, one may uh, look into ways in which uh, the, the government in general is dealing with uh, dealing with uh, situations like this. So here I think what is uh, instructive is uh, the fact that um, uh, at various points, uh, I'm, I'm quoting kind of Paul Tan here, uh, he is an academic over in uh, Singapore, at various points these modern efforts to formulate a national identity have turned to traditional, traditional sources associated through imagination and invention with Confucianism and Asian values. This is uh, pretty much uh, one of those uh, key uh, things that the government had promoted in the 1980s. At other times, those efforts have turned to a more pragmatic orientation that characterize Singaporeans as uninterested in dogmatic ideology and childish ideals. I mean, uh, this is written in 2007, way before the Bukit Brown Affair. But uh, you, you, you can see the, the kind of uh, you know, uh, state attitude towards uh, civil society attempting to uh, indicate their concerns about uh, such things. So, uh, but engage with the material and ut utilitarian basis of nationhood that often collapse into angst and talk about survival and success. So, uh, in, the, in, in that sense, the pragmatism, uh, the politics of pra pragmatism is invoked where necessary. The notion of uh, values is invoked necessary depending on the argument coming from the civil society groups. So, um, in terms of what can an institution do? Uh, here I'm again, uh, I'm, I'm coming to this whole question about what the university museum uh, should be thinking about and what sort of modalities in which a university museum should uh, begin to uh, develop and operate. So uh, I'm taking off here from uh, Patrick Flores' 2002 article about interventions in art practice. So the whole idea of agenda. Uh, interventions are delineated by determinate choice and therefore are political and politicized. And, and I think that's uh, in, in, important to note. I think that the question is ways in which you begin to allow those uh, agencies to come into play even within institutionalized spaces. Um, I skip a little bit. And it is not as if the social were mere scenery in this theater of human action. It is at once figure and ground. It is not that art exists in context, but art generates the context through the effective agency of artists in society. In the generation of context, the mediation of curators and curation, art criticism and history, and art critics and historians, and responsive and responsible audience is vital not only in presenting art of tracking the energy of the realm, 
but making sense of it, in weaving discourse about it, in making things happen. And uh, within the same publication, in Lucas, he began to uh, invoke a particular, perhaps, a range of uh, uh, particular modalities or, or approaches or strategies here, more accurately. Um, and, and here he invoked the idea of uh, parasite. Um, and of course you can uh, read the, his various uh, indications of what parasite may mean. So uh, if art is to be valued as intervention in everyday practice and relocates beyond its tradition and placement, how does it configure its parasite and how does it configure as a parasite? And the question for me is that how can an institution self-consciously begin to uh, allow itself to be uh, seduced by this whole idea of uh, parasitic engagements. Um, it is as though that uh, we create and disavow simultaneously the stuff that we do. Uh, as though that we can curate and, un and unpack at the same time. So um, I think this is an interesting problematic, but uh, uh, what uh, I would like to perhaps talk about is, uh, you know, firstly giving an account of the history, perhaps a little bit more of the predicament of the uh, museum itself. So the museum was established around, 19, around the mid-1950s, uh, before Singapore's independence. So perhaps because of that, it can be regarded as a kind of, kind of a prototypal institution um, that goes through the passage of decolonization, simultaneous formation of newly independent states across former British colonies, and the emergence of uh, experience of modernity in its disruptive, tumultuous, and transformative forms provide, uh, that that's provide the context here. Yeah. So when I come to the museum around 2006, um, this particular history seems very interesting. So the questions confronted the museum, perhaps to me, revolve around the implications of the museum in interrogating itself obsessively, if that's possible at all. So um, a number of curatorial propositions need consideration. How does a museum, encumbered by its commitment to its collection and perceived universal, universal role, respond to situations on the one hand, encouraged by the prospects on the other, observant of the expectations of the immediate host, uh, which is the university and state at large, in charting new roles and direction, how does it reconcile or revalue its fundamental missions with the broader aims of the university, for example. So what about the possibility of an open-ended system that sustain a negotiation between museum practice and critical body of discourses holding the museum's agenda simultaneously provisionary, evolving, constantly informed by newer ways of approaching and reading material history and visual culture. So um, when, when we start thinking about all those questions, so we start to conceptualize the museum along uh, the following interests. The representation of the permanent collection in uh, organized along broad geocultural typologies and the historical, uh, periodically reorganized to project fluid readings, perhaps, uh, drawing from chronological perspectives, formal and conceptual themes across disciplinary interests. The permanent representations are to be regarded problematic. I think uh, that's, that's one thing that we wanted to do on the onset, encumbered by their own determinate bureaucratic interests, not least the expectations of those that initiate and sustain their growth. So temporary exhibitions are to be conceived in dialogic uh, form, uh, in dialogic, dialogic relations so as to facilitate provisional propositions that are referential to a range of disciplines such as artistry and others. And I would like to emphasize others. Uh, Lodge within and between these permanent and temporary projections are bodies of text, materials, and objects that references the archival. Appearing as mini libraries organized as tight storage consoles, these are by no means conceived to invoke the encyclopedic, but rather to create locales of provocation, to insist complexities in relation to the general exhibits, and to prompt forms of conceptual interaction from its audience. Collectively, these exhibitions, their objects, and most of display are attempt at creating a vast matrix of 
support that provide a dynamic experience that opens possibilities across disciplinary and theoretical frames. Uh, that's the aim. Uh, to aid such transactions, exhibitions and their, collect and, and their collections are also to be rendered as discursive spaces of curating that necessitates various authorial interplay, use of narrative, counter-narrative and non-narrative. Order and chaos, direct, ambiguous and ambivalent, builds complexities and promotes questioning. So uh, here, in, in some ways, uh, I would like to uh, go through some of the questions that we begin <coughs> asking and some of the uh, attitudes that we begin to adopt. Uh, this is one of the earliest exhibition in the series that we do, we, in which we are attempting to uh, mobilize some of the thoughts that I have I've indicated. So this is an exhibition of uh, an artist, Muhammad Din Muhammad. He died 2007. He was a painter and sculptor. He concurrently practiced as a traditional healer. Um, he works uh, with amulets, talismanic, and healing with healing properties. Uh, he composed specific ways in particular with particular attention to the requirement of his uh, audience or his even art buyers. So his home, his house, became a basis in which we uh, think about exhibition. So it's a rich intermingling of ritual objects and altered objects, art objects, uh, all the while acknowledging the artificiality represented by the museum and its taxonomic conventions. So the approach of the archive was not just to capture a modernist duality between rational and not so rational, or between what constitutes science and what is uh, potentially magic, but as a critique which sought to lodge itself in between such a dialectical space generated when objects defying museological taxonomic classifications uh, are forced to enter uh, an implicit archival process before they can be exhibited into the, the museological complex. So, these are some of the spaces. So uh, what we have done, this is done very, very um, problematically, is to place uh, the objects that he had created and called art with objects that he uh, had collected and surround himself in his home. Uh, more often than not, these materials uh, crisscross each other he will use the material from his ritual practice as uh, objects of art and vice versa. And when uh, he begin to uh, create his artwork, this artwork are to uh, maintain or has a certain uh, talismanic quality. So it's, it's, a, a, it's a very uh, particular way in dealing with uh, this, this whole notion of uh, modern and the irrational. So the next project that, that we did was uh, this project. So what, what I'm trying to uh, indicate is that there is, uh, for us, the fixity of an art museum dealing with art and art only uh, is something that we want to render unstable. And uh, more often than not, we found that uh, this uh, work with the archival or the historical or doing uh, a pseudo historical exhibition becomes uh, an, a critical aspect of our work. So we have art curators dealing with uh, historical objects. So here we uh, were confronted with a whole collection of archival materials from this gentleman called Ivan Polunin. Uh, in 2009, we had this exhibition uh, memories of Singapore through films and photographs. Um, so this is a collection of materials from uh, Dr. Ivan Polunin. It's a remarkable collection. Uh, it, uh, he was uh, basically a doctor. Uh, he came to Malaya around in 1948. Then he was researching into public health. Um, what he has done, because he was doing uh, research into uh, tribes and the health issues of those tribes in parts of Malaya, he was busily documenting uh, in ethnographic forms, he was also busy documenting in natural history forms. 
Um, he was also uh, assigned by, um, by, by BBC, for example, to uh, film and create documentaries. Um, so it is conceptualized as a form of an archival site. So the exhibition brings together his personal materials uh, and then uh, they, they were displayed alongside uh, other materials such as uh, residues, such as files, such as uh, technical equipment. Uh, the exhibition alludes to the, perhaps the therapeutic potentials of recalling memories um, in Singapore's past, all in the attempt of making sense of the condition of the modern. Here, inferring the geographical and historical terrain that Dr. Polinin material occupy, the reader perhaps is invited to recognize how the contemporary and the historical predicaments interact. So the display of the materials and life uh, dramatically shifted and continu continuously oscillated the locus of the gaze from the Malayan exotica and its species to Dr. Polunin's as a passionate uh, scholar and the viewer simultaneously occupying a space of nostalgia and, and his historical reassessment. So the reception uh, for the exhibition is, uh, uh, is, is very mixed, it's problematic. Uh, the, the narrative approach which remains self-conscious of the other as a construct which emerges from within the enunciations of a post-colonial discourse seem displaced into a particularized form of nostalgia of Singapore's loss of times which, uh, and places which demand the reclamation from all images as if to negotiate a particular cultural and political authority. Then we move on to this uh, particular uh, project on Erika Tan. So the, the whole uh, notion of the exotic appeal that was uh, in the early exhibition was perhaps uh, attempted to be subverted by this uh, particular project, Erika Tan's Persistent Vision uh, Project. This is a 24-minute three-screen installation. Um, the, install the, the, the video draws upon amateur audio and visual materials collected by individuals and families uh, attached to British colonizing missions in the early 20th century, uh, now deposited at the Empire and Commonwealth Museum in UK. Uh, and the installation primarily sought to understand uh, how imaginations of the Orient came to be within the museum space itself. The artwork was strategically placed in the museum's archival square, which is a kind of uh, uh, archaeological repository of materials. Um, so the gallery itself is sandwiched uh, within the permanent display of predominantly Chinese bronzes, ceramics, and jade artifacts. Uh, ranging from the Han to Qing eras and the temporary exhibition gallery uh, that, re that presents East Asian modern and contemporary art. So lodged between the above mentioned spaces uh, of the civilizational and the contemporary uh, was this uh, installation uh, persistent vision uh, to, on to only be further complicated by other ongoing exhibitions uh, like the one uh, in, 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 uh, done by uh, Ivan Polinin. So those two exhibitions are simultaneous. Um, I think the the questions and failure of this uh, perhaps exhibition can be best uh, indicated by Erika herself. This is uh, her answer to an interview. Uh, what does this say about the institution? Does the work become institutionalized critique sanctioned by the museum to show its openness for diverse opinions and perspective, or this is an engagement for mutual dialogue between museum and work. So, Persistent Vision owns reference points are those of the archive, the original filmmakers, and associated uh, spatial temporal context. The current opportunity to show the work, banks, Mac in the midst of the Chinese ceramics, etc., will, uh, I hope, according to Erica, emphasize something about the work that might have been lost in other more white cube showings. Here I hope that the fact that it's, it's, it mumbles, stutters and fails to inform it definitely will not only affect its own reception but call into the question the rationale by which other proximate objects, artifacts, archives, text panels are made become and, and made or become significant.
So uh, here, uh, let me just reiterate, this is uh, the manner in which it was presented uh, alongside the museum's uh, archaeological collection. The exhibition that proved for us to uh, be um, the most difficult and the most problematic is camping and tramping. So in early 2010, the NUS Museum embarked on a broader research relating to the development of the museum. So this is a very self-conscious uh, kind of a work. Um, so the, the focus was to look into the pre period of British Malaya and the uh, inceptions of museums in Malaya itself. Um, so as a curatorial project, the camp camping and tramping is conceived as a fluid encounter with museum collections and texts mainly from 1874 to 1959 as an attempt to render open readings about the emergence and transformations of early museological institutions, isolating and, pre isolating and presenting a particular historical resource that facilitates perspectives to pertinent uh, the shifting roles and limits of institutions engendered by their task of collecting and archiving. So the exhibition brings together artifacts and materials from the Raffles Museum and Library, which was established in Singapore in, 1870, uh, in 1874, and the University of Malay Museum, which uh, was our, uh, our, our own history in 1955. So the exhibition offers the question of the museum in Malaya as evolving propositions expressed through shifting concepts of colonial knowledge, its responses to emerging contingencies of colonial politics and eventual decolonization and changing regard for its publics and their aspirations. Collecting, documenting, ordering, preserving, and displaying functions declared and sustained are tasks made complex by such uh, contexts. So the birth and transformation and end of the institutions render the collections and document, documents as dynamic sets of archives that are mobile and regenerative, open to newer significations and claims. As such, the exhibition had been divided into the following sections. The museum is an idea, which is uh, uh, consisting of an exhibition purely of text, uh, shifts are the self, uh, other and self, and accumulations, object, knowledge, wonder. So uh, here what you see is a particular section in uh, our uh, archival whereby we uh, collected a whole range of uh, uh, articles, uh, uh, those uh, uh, printed in journals and colonial reports and gather them and, and thematize them uh, as, as, uh, as an archival reference. Uh, what they are located in the very first section here, the very section here that uh, is basically dealing with the museum as idea. It, uh, ba it is based on a particular text that was written in 1874 uh, by a gentleman by the name of James Collins, which argued for the development of a museum, the Raffles Museum, and uh, argued for its role and function within the uh, colonial project. Uh, so this is uh, in an intermixture between what constitutes the museum as a civilizing force, uh, also what constitutes the museum as this economic uh, project of the colony. So if you can imagine, the text would go round the gallery itself, as you see on the top left hand side. So as reminders on how individuals in the region have laid claim to the colonial archive, the gallery also revived the artistic practices of Muhammad Din Muhammad, the earlier artist who is a traditional healer, and archival practice of Ivan Polunin, the materials of, uh, uh, of, of this uh, Dr. Polunin collected during the 50s. And considering not just the museum, but a series of institutions and structures in which lives of its people were 
and continue to be and mesh forming sort of a grid as a series of social memories brought together or alluded to at least within the museological space as a current diffusion of power, knowledge and identity under, underpinned by the multifarious habitations of modernity we refer to as Singapore or the gallery was uh, translated into systems that establish statements as events uh, with their own conditions and domains of presence and things with their own possibility and fields of use. So the emergence of such traces flow of statements lodged between document and artifact is proposed as camping and trapping through the colonial archives. So here you, you have this, again, this intermingling, this uh, composition of uh, uh, interests uh, stated uh, differentiatedly by uh, different persons. So James Collins on the right hand side stating in 74 about this insistence upon uh, science as a matter. Um, by 2004, of course, Muhammad and Muhammad uh, looking into his own uh, position uh, in terms of redeeming perhaps, uh, in terms of recuperating uh, or insisting ownership uh, for the archives, for the uh, materials that he renders uh, ethnographically his, uh, make another statement about uh, ways in which these are vital materials with vital powers as opposed to artifactual. I'm sorry, it seems stuck. Okay. Okay, there's uh, another view of the exhibition. So simultaneously as the camping and tramping project continued in the early 2010, the museum uh, also launched a project to document a 19th century shrine located in east of Singapore. The exhibition was titled Sufi and the Bearded Man. I think uh, I showed you the image uh, as the very first one. Uh, it began as a series of just email exchanges between a historian and the museum itself uh, about the impending closure of Siti Mariam uh, shrine. Uh, situated uh, along Kalang River, Singapore. Uh, the closure raised questions about the status and place of such sites and its communities within the formal structures of heritage making in Singapore. So it was decided to pair the Sufi uh, exhibition alongside camping and tramping, uh, uh, enabling reflections into questions of the roles and limits and constraints of uh, museological practice. Then curatorially then, Camping and Tramping and its comparison exhibition Sufi function as this transaction between museum's permanent and temporary exhibition, each contextualizing and problem problematizing the other. The former is conceived to account the rise of museum in British Malaya and in doing so stages a re-encounter re with the NUS museum as a historical entity, placing it in relation to historical developments and colonial policies since the late 19th century and key institutions such as Raffles Museum and the Library. The idea of the museum often imagined as a project of nation and modernity is held unstable, contingent on shifting contexts and predicaments, their perceived publics and assumptions uh, on objects and their meanings. The later exhibition, The Sufi and the Bearded Man, is conceived to prompt discussions regarding the entry of objects and their associated events into the museum and the limits of the museum as a public institution. Placed within these exhibition spaces are textual materials that underline the vast and open terrain of interpretative possibilities that may work alongside each other, that also may obfuscate and even challenge the curatorial positions defined in the exhibitions. So organized along this exhibition are a series of talks and discussions involving artists, curators, and academics. And in these discussions, indeed, um, the whole range of problems are, point, uh, are pointed to us. Uh, for example, this particular exhibition, uh, what we do is we brought along four different uh, persons with uh, a very divergent interest towards the subject. The historian, which attempts to uh, insist on the uh, importance of 
generating memory and defining memory uh, for the, the space itself. And, and then we have a photographer which is, who is uh, working as a kind of a visual anthropologist, uh, uh, documenting the, the space as well as the moment in which uh, the space was demolished. And the curator, and that's where the problem begins, because um, the cur what the curator did was to was to uh, begin to systematically look at the various residues of the shrine itself. This was the shrine before the demolition, and when it was demolished, the curator collected all those residues and artifacts and begin to work uh, using installative devices like an artist to bring it into the museum and developing it as a kind of an um, installation. So in that sense, um, the artist, uh, the curator is displacing the artist in terms of uh, defining the subjectivity rather than working uh, as a curator, rationalizing uh, the, the, the content itself. Uh, and when we would begin discussion with uh, uh, many others, including academics, one of the key things pointed uh, was that uh, this particular project or projects like this um, imposes two series of violence. On the first, on, on, on in in the first instance, of course, the shrine was demolished, and in the second instance after this particular exhibition has ended, the museum, given, if it's func given its functional role or the lack of it in, in relation to uh, these sort of materials, uh, could not offer any kind of respite. So the, the materials will uh, again be in limbo. So this is a set of images where the curator actually as the shrine is being demolished, uh, salvage materials from the dump. That includes the central tree that occupies the shrine. So the, the question that we're asking is that can heritage be highly democratic and fluid process, all the while testing the boundaries of the museum? So here the caretaker, the historian, the photographer, the museum worker, can these very agencies be commingled into late modes of seeing and being? So uh, perhaps I would like to end with these uh, sets of questions. Um, in, in our, I think, uh, in terms of finding ways in which we can locate uh, histories, it's uh, uh, important to ask the questions rather than uh, answer those questions. So can we locate the University Museum as a site in which diversity of knowledges and publics transact with the museum objects, insisting on the need to, uh, to subject the museum as a site of encounters where meanings are defined by the interplay between the constitutive nature of materials as museological or art historical objects and the polytropic constructs afforded by such encounters? In other words, where prospects of knowledge production can be held dynamic through engagements with the university public, the role of the university museum can no longer be limited to its institutional authority. Instead, its purpose must be to facilitate aesthetic and intellectual experiences that are heterogeneous and productive. So it is, uh, of course, a very uh, important question and uh, difficult question. So here, what we have is a kind of a device that we have used in order to begin to map out the possibilities arising from that single exhibition. So I shall stop here, although there are a little bit more slides. Thank you.